CTA President Dr. Lufsang Singe has been continuously criticized by the Chinese government when it comes to his visit abroad. For today's episode, we have the gracious presence of Si Kyung to speak more on the topic. Si Kyung La, it's lovely in every way to have your presence in the studio. Welcome to our show. Thank you, Si Kyung La. So, Si Kyung La, in 2011, after you were elected as the political leader of the Tibetans, um, the Chinese government, they have been continuously criticizing your every action and your every statement. And uh, we can see that when you make your visits abroad, there are people protesting your visits and your talks. This also includes the recent visit that you have made to the U.S. when you had a meeting with the newly appointed U.S. Special Coordinator for Tibetan Issues, uh, Robert Destro. Mm -hmm. Why do you think that China is paying so much attention to what you do, to whom you meet, and to what you say? You know, if you follow Chinese government policies, especially their white papers, and uh, they always mention two entities, Tibetan government exile and Tibetan Youth Congress. So in 2011, you know, I was labeled and affiliated to a terrorist organization that was Tibetan Youth Congress. The Chinese government, they don't want to see uh, Central Tibetan administration build this network you know, and create uh, space for itself, political space. So that's where they try to undermine, dilute, you know, reduce your profile. Um, anywhere you go. So that's where being the president of the CTA, they would like to see that you know, the, the president do not get any meetings, do not get any profile, do not, do not get any coverages, uh, so that you know, essentially uh, they want to dilute and destroy CTA. So as their plan is to convert Tibet into a Chinese province, as their uh, plan is to make Tibetans Chinese, so they want you know, the, our presence also uh, in the international forum uh, to be reduced and you know, non-existent. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, as they uh, have said, their policy is to have 100% um, propaganda, their propaganda, to spread in the outside world and zero propaganda to come, propaganda or information come from outside to inside Tibet. So more you travel, more you get coverage, more you get support, and the information travels back to Tibet, and that gives Tibetans in Tibet hope. Mm -hmm. And that gives them the solidarity that, yes, we have our you know, uh, spokesperson, our you know, representative in the outside world. So that's why you know, they try to undermine you. So that's their effort. They try to label you as a terrorist. They try to you know, pressure you. Mm -hmm. So during my recent meeting with uh, Special Coordinator Destro, you know, they prote officially protested by the you know, Chinese government's foreign ministry. That shows the level of concern. And so that shows the level of pressure that they want to put. So Si Kyung La, during your visit to uh, South Africa and also in Toronto, we have seen um, the Chinese students protesting and not only did the Chinese embassy they issued a press release condemning your visit and your talks mm -hmm. but uh, there were so many Chinese students and also there were some people also protesting your visit so we wanted to know if they were really Chinese students because some reports say that they were uh, migrants hired by the Chinese uh, government and some also say that uh, the officials of the Chinese embassies were seen in the protest site distributing pamphlets. Yes, two protests. One is outside the University of Toronto. Uh, they were mainly Chinese students, but they were doing at the behest of the Chinese consulate in Toronto. Uh, that we know, because they were singing Chinese national anthem. But in South Africa, so officially the Chinese embassy issued a press release, you know, condemning my visit, not allowing to meet uh, people. And at the law school at the Cape Town, where I was supposed to give a talk, they hired, you know, 100 plus migrant workers and they stormed the campus. They entered the auditorium where I was speaking. In fact, there were students, uh, law students, they were waiting for me to speak and all had to move out because they went on uh, the stage, you know, and then shouted slogans with big banners, you know, Tibet is part of China, things like that. So yes, they went out of their way to hire migrant workers to protest because next year when I went, they told me all the report. Um, and they, they didn't know what they were doing because they were singing a song, Ole, 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 you know, that's the football 
you know, related uh, song. Um, and so that's what they do, so which, which again shows that the Chinese government is going out of their way to issue press release, hire people to protest, because they really want to threaten um, and pressurize the authorities in the university, um, both in Toronto and in South Africa, you know. Uh, and this, uh, the uh, one in South Africa is also a very prominent law school. So not only officially they protest, but, you know, um, issue press releases, but, you know, they go out of the way. So that means, on the one hand, you know, um, it's good uh, that the Chinese government notices, you know, the CTA's presence. Um, the fact that they have to hire people to protest means, you know, you are making some impact. On the other hand, it also shows how powerful uh, and how strong uh, the Chinese government is flexing their muscle mm -hmm. to different, you know, governments around the world. Um, so we see many occasions where your visits and talks occur simultaneously uh, with the visits and talks of the Chinese delegations with the officials of the same country. How many such parallel visits occurred so far? And how do you see this incident, Sikyongla? You think that it is a strategy of the Chinese government that they have been planning all this ahead of your visits? Um, I think many uh, parallel visits, you know. Uh, for example, I was at um, Ottawa uh, in the parliament. I was meeting a member of parliament and he said, you know, uh, we are having lunch tomorrow again uh, with the speaker. I said, no. Oh, uh, yes, you are. And then he checked, oh, with the mayor of Lhasa. And I said, no, I represent CTA and the mayor of Lhasa is the, you know, Chinese government's delegation. So next day at the same luncheon place and where the member of parliament eat, uh, you know, it's the same restaurant. So at the other table, we could see, you know, a group of Tibetan looking and Chinese officials meeting with some Canadian, you know, uh, officials. Uh, so it was exactly the same time. And once in Switzerland, you know, uh, we had an appointment around 10 something and uh, we were waiting at the cafeteria. As we were walking towards the parliament, we got a call saying, can we delay our meeting by another half an hour? And after a half an hour, we went back to the cafeteria, we went uh, to the uh, parliament, and there we saw only two members of parliament of the, you know, uh, the, in, in Switzerland. So it was surprising for me because a few months prior, five or six members of parliament from Switzerland had come to Dharamsala and they stayed for five days. So we interacted with them and they all said, you should come back and we'll host you. When I actually went there, there were only two. Then later we found out, most likely, the Chinese delegation was in the same parliament house convincing party leaders not to host me, you know. So when five or six members of parliament had come to Dharamsala, five or six members of parliament should be there uh, at the parliament to meet with me, but only two showed up, you know. Um, at the same time, the Swiss Parliament Support Group claimed to have, you know, 23 or I don't know, 25 members of Parliament as our, as our supporters. So when you have only two, because when I go to uh, U.S., even as senators and congressmen, I I meet you know five or six congressmen, you know, sometimes two or three senators at the same time. And U.S. senators and congressmen meetings are very difficult. But you know, even in Switzerland, when only two show up, you can clearly sense. I remember once in Australia, after my visit, there was a delegation from Tibet. Even in Washington, D.C., Washington Post did a you know, uh, column, wrote about while I was there, and the Chinese delegation was meeting a uh, you know, uh, uh, U.S. senator. So all this takes you know, take place all the time. So you know, this is the effort. Either they go ahead of me, uh, or they come during my visit, or after my visit, you know, so you know, they, 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 they play this game uh, to have their presence as well. So Si Kyungla, like you mentioned, the Chinese government has always been sabotaging most of your visits and most of your meetings. Mm -hmm. Similarly, I know this is very common that most of your meetings and visits have gotten cancelled due to the Chinese pressure mm -hmm. on the governments of the uh, respective countries. But uh, despite all the criticisms and despite all the warnings, there are, there are many uh, governments also mm -hmm. who are uh, meeting with you despite mm -hmm. receiving criticisms like that of the mm -hmm. uh, official of Denmark who mm -hmm. had gone to China and was warned yes. particularly not to meet Si Kiong, yes. Dr. Lok Sang Senge, but then he decided to meet you. Why do they do so? 
Uh, I think there are some who are committed, you know, for, you know, towards uh, human rights values, towards uh, democratic values, environmental values. So a particular member of parliament is quite a senior member of parliament. He had just come from China a week or two prior. And as I was meeting, he said, while I was in China, I was told uh, a mid-level Chinese official wagged his finger and said, Xi Jinping is coming to Denmark and you better not meet with him. So at that time, he was you know, quite angry, actually, um, because he said, you know, I've come to China to listen to your perspective. So when I go back to my country, if another person with different perspective comes, it's a democratic thing to meet the person and listen to what they have to say. So he was, in a way, angry and furious. He said, look, the fact that he wagged his finger at me, I must meet with you and I must put a photograph you know, uh, together. So there are officials like that. Um, and then, you know, you get this often in Washington, D.C., or senator or speaker's house. When I go, oh, we got a call yesterday from Chinese embassy saying, tomorrow at 4 p.m. you are meeting Xi Jinping, don't meet with him. They always keep down the phone, say thank you and keep down the phone. But there are other countries where, you know, um, again, in Nordic countries, is it Sweden, Denmark, or Norway? I don't remember. But I had a meeting with the speaker uh, of the parliament here yeah, at 9.30 or so. And then, you know, uh, I'm all dressed up now, ready to go at 8.30, you know. Then you get a call saying it's cancelled. So there are some countries, you know, who um, bow down to the pressure of the Chinese government. So, but, you know, you should always, you know, have this in mind that, you know, Tibetans and Tibet are suffering. Tibetans in Tibet are, you know, sacrificing themselves, burning themselves, you know, they are in prison. So when these disappointments happen, and so you have to tell yourself, you know, for 60 plus years, this is what His Holiness Dalai Lama did, you know. And, uh, you know, so emotionally sometimes, you know, you tend to get a little low, you know, uh, because I particularly remember this cancellation of the speaker. The weather was rainy, damp, and cold, you know. Now you're all dressed up, and then meeting is cancelled. Now what do you do for one hour, you know? When you try to read newspaper, it's a different language, you know. When you try to watch the news, it's different language. I mean, you have to pass your time, you know. So obviously you open your iPad and email and, you know, do other stuff. Uh, but you're already outside of the lobby, you know, to go. But then you always tell yourself, this is a freedom struggle, you know. That's what I always say. I mean, I always say, Tibetan freedom struggle, the struggle word, you, know, you must always remember, it's always a struggle. Hence, you know, our Buddhist principles, equanimity, you know, all that helps you to, to keep moving forward. So, Sikyongla, how much is China succeeding in pressurizing other governments to avoid having engagements with the Tibetan, Tibetan leaders in exile and also threatening Tibetan leaders, including you? They are succeeding, you know. For example, um, there are 200 some countries in the world. His Holiness has visited around 50, 60 countries. Even His Holiness of his stature, right? His Holiness is not able to visit any of the Buddhist countries right here in Asia, mm -hmm. right? And the uh, whole of Africa and, you know, uh, South America. So, and I have in the last, you know, nine plus years, I have visited I don't know, 30 countries, at most 25, 30 countries. Still, there are 170 countries left to be visited. Mm -hmm. And we are not able to do so, uh, primarily because, you know, of the Chinese government pressure, right? Uh, so they are succeeding in, you know, isolating and you know, reducing our space. So that's why we are very appreciative of all these countries which allow us to visit many European countries, you know, in the North America. Now, a few other, few countries, you know, I've been to Mexico and, uh, and South Africa. So, you know, we must make our presence uh, felt. Even, uh, you know, a nation like Taiwan, a similar situation. They're very sympathetic. They, we understand each other very well. But, you know, each time I talk to my friends there, they say, you know, we are very worried what the Chinese government will do. And if you could postpone the meeting, you know, our visit, and I've been postponing it for the last um, nine years, right? Um, and then look at all the Buddhist countries. They are Buddhists, you know. Look at Bhutan and look at Nepal. I'm banned in Nepal. Uh, Mongolia and Sri Lanka, all this. They know the situation very well. They are very sympathetic at the people's level. Mm -hmm. But the government level, you know, not yet.
So, you know, we should be aware. Sometimes you, we, we forget, we say, oh, because we are in a few European countries and North America, we think we are in the world. No, there are 170 countries we are yet to visit, we are yet to make our presence felt, you know. So even these countries where we visit, meetings get cancelled. Mm -hmm. And where meetings are not cancelled, they are parallel delegation, you know. So Chinese government is making all-out efforts. Um, now, in African continent, CCTV is watched equal to BBC and CNN. It's one of the mainstream media. So when they watch CCTV, their version on Tibet, their propaganda on Tibetan people, is uh, listened to and watched and believed by many people in Africa and Latin America. It's true. So that way, you know, we are yet, um, you know, yet to make you know, inroads in these continents. So that has always been a challenge. So it's a huge challenge, you know, so it's very important to protect what we have, but keep expanding. So it's always a choice. And as a Sikyong, I think I am one Sikyong who, who must have traveled the most, but still I've managed to cover only, you know. Um, 25 to 30 countries. Yeah, that's like, you know, 10, 15 percent of the, you know, world. Uh, so still 80, 85 percent is left. Yeah. So Sikyongla, speaking about the recently arrested spies, mm. we can see how China is conducting spy operations in the Tibetan communities mm. in the US, Sweden, and also here in India. Mm. So how should we Tibetans stay careful and stay alert in such matters? Yeah, we have to be very, very alert. Chinese government is already doing you know, uh, multi-pronged strategies. And pr one thing is pretty clear. So all those countries where we have not visited, they have put so much pressure by you know, having trade relationship, economic relation, diplomatic relationship, which completely prevents us from visiting. Those countries where we visit, they have this you know, pressure and parallel delegations, things like that. And then wherever we are, Tibetans are in different countries, they have spy networks now. So one in New York uh, was arrested. Uh, one in Sweden was not only arrested, but the recently the court also decided to deport him. Government wanted to deport him, right? And uh, we have few you know, suspects uh, in Australia. Clearly, they work for the Chinese embassy. And uh, in Nepal, yes, Chinese spies, Chinese presence, Tibetan Chinese you know, spies are also very strong. Um, and they are trying to make inroads in, you know, uh, in India as well. It's very difficult to have their own uh, presence. Uh, and then recently there was a case in Brussels um, where the, the you know, Belgium government took a step uh, to file a case uh, against the Tibetan. Um, and then, you know, uh, Swiss government is also clearly looking into it. Um, and in Paris, uh, in the Netherlands. So wherever there are Tibetan communities, Chinese government is making efforts. And that's why I always tell, you know, Tibetans to be careful when you go to the Chinese embassy, when you meet a Chinese, you have to be very, very careful. You might think you're doing this to get your visa and to, to go meet your family and, and friends in Tibet, which you should, because you, know, you should go meet your family and friends, because you are from Tibet. But you have to be careful, because they should not be using you, mainly because all these governments are watching. So that's why the New York case, you know. Uh, and the Sweden and Brussels, all this are happening. Now, even in India, uh, we had the Charlie Peng case, right? Um, the arrest. And Rajiv Sharma, an Indian journalist, writing critical articles about His Holiness Dalai Lama and His Holiness' relationship between, with Sikyong. Uh, he wrote that. And many Tibetans shared, you know, uh, that article that His Holiness and Sikyong has some issues. They shared. Think, and then they also look. Indian journalists, India media is writing the story. So there must be some issues, you know, between His Holiness and Sikyong. And these are some, you know, even former government officials, you know, some showed me. So, you know, we are uh, taken for a ride. We are fooled and we are cheated, you know. So we have to be extremely careful. Uh, Chinese ten government tentacles are everywhere in the world, including in our community, within our own society. So... And this is part of the game, you know, and we have to be extremely careful because we are vulnerable. Um, so, you know, that's why I always say be very careful and be very vigilant 
And whenever you read something in social media, uh, don't start sharing it because it's sensational, because something you know disturbing, you know. Don't just read it carefully. Uh, sit on it for 24, 48 hours, analyze it carefully, and then take the next step of sharing. So yes, I think we are vulnerable, you know, from within, from outside, political pressure. So we have to be very careful. Yes, Sikyongla, despite all the challenges and all the criticisms and all the inconveniences that the Tibetans are facing in exile and also inside Tibet mm -hmm. itself, we have still not lost hope. And also we really hope that there will come a day when all the Tibetans in exile and the Tibetans in Tibet will unite. Thank you so much, Sikyongla, for speaking to Tibet TV. Thank you. That's our dream and that's the aspirations of Tibetans in Tibet. And hopefully that day will come very soon. Thank you, Sakina. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next episode of In Conversation with Tibet TV.